South Dakota alone, we've seen over a third of our wetland basins have been lost to agricultural intensification and, and development of our urban areas. Some areas of the Prairie Pothole region have seen quite a bit more. Uh, further east and south, more than 90% of those wetland basins are gone and almost no grasslands remain. Habitat conservation is a vital part to everything here in the Prairie Pothole region. And if we don't have sufficient habitat on the landscape to support all of these different species, then those species won't be here anymore. So the Prairie Pothole region is, is really uh, unique. Uh, it was created uh, about 13,000 years ago with our last glaciation event. Glaciers came in, uh, retreated, came in and, and moved back and forth across this landscape and really scoured out millions of sa small shallow depressions and wetlands that, that the waterfowl need uh, to establish uh, breeding territories in the springtime. And you have really the, the perfect mix uh, for, for breeding habitat for waterfowl and all sorts of migratory species. Take a walk uh, in these grasslands and wetlands. You're gonna see hundreds of species of, of grasses and forbs. All sorts of, of waterfowl, shorebirds, grassland birds, water birds, upland birds, uh, deer, foxes, coyotes. Incredible diversity uh, of both resident and migratory wildlife that depend on this area. Uh, if we lose this area, we're not just gonna impact our local critters, but really, across the entire uh, continent. So Ducks Unlimited is uh, the world leading uh, wetlands conservation organization. We're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we raise money uh, throughout North America and, and we turn that into habitat. Really focusing on, on wetlands on a, on a continental scale uh, that are critically important for waterfowl. So two thirds of North America's waterfowl actually comes out of the Prey Pothole region. The Prairie Pothole region is Ducks Unlimited's number one area of concern, so all of our work really stems out of here because of the importance that it has for nesting waterfowl. So DU cares about soil health because uh, we want to reduce erosion and reduce harmful inputs uh, that goes in our wetlands. So if we have healthy wetlands, we have uh, better places for ducks and waterfowl to live and breed. Soil health is a systemic approach to improving crop practices, improving the overall soil function as a part of an ecosystem. So that's where DU comes in with our soil health program. Uh, we're able to do soil tests and uh, we're able to see how much carbon, how much nitrogen, how much phosphorus, how much bacteria is in your soil so we can actually start the conversation with the, with the landowner, provide technical assistance, and then in some cases, or most cases, provide financial assistance to these guys to start the journey into soil health. So soil health is really uh, the metric we use to, to, to measure the success of, of the practices we're using. And those practices include you know, reducing annual tillage, uh, increasing crop diversity, getting more grasses on the landscape and keeping our livestock and cattle industry in, intact in South Dakota. All of these principles work together uh, to, to improve, improve soil health uh, and also to improve habitat on the landscape at the same time. Historically, the Prairie Pothole region was all grasslands and wetlands. And as man moved out into the landscape, we see this influx of agriculture intensification. And as that continued through the years, we've seen a lot of the grassland habitat be converted into cropland, which is totally acceptable because when you look at the soils, it's extremely fertile. And that's what brings a lot of attraction to this region for cropland production and also raising beef. So when we think of it in that aspect, you know, we care about what the producers are doing on the ground. Historically, 11% of the United States landmass was covered in wetlands. Today, we are at under 5%. Even with the reduction of wetlands on the landscape, over 31% of plant species are found in wetland landscapes. So in South Dakota, we're known for our weather events and primarily I'm talking about wind. So it's not unfamiliar for South Dakota to see upwards of 40 and 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And when that happens, we see a ton of topsoil movement. There's millions of dollars that are lost every year through wind erosion, through nutrients and carbon and the um, biological life in that top layer of soil that is 
that gets blown around that it dies um, and that's lost. And once that's lost, it's, it's hard to regain it. In regards to the water system here in the Prairie Pajol region, we start thinking about rain events. And if you look at a grassland versus tilled cropland and a droplet of rain hitting each surface, when it hits the grasses, it dissipates and allows that moisture to infiltrate that soil. But when we talk about a tilled cropland system, that raindrop acts as an atomic bomb on the surface of the soil and it displaces the soil and causes a lot of erosion. Our rainfall does not soak into the ground. It hits the ground and runs sideways and collects into our wetlands and rivers and streams and lakes. And at the same time, sometimes it's carrying with it uh, some of those uh, extra agricultural additives in, in, um, that are laying on the landscape. We can see that over time, wetlands can completely lose their functionality and be gone from the landscape forever. That's a sign that our system is broken and we need to think about how we fix that. How do we improve soil health? And how do we keep grasslands on the landscape? We have to be thinking like farmers and ranchers. Uh, how can we help them do that? Uh, and really there are a growing number of producers that are doing this uh, and they're providing the, the stimulus that we need in this area. If we can help them uh, with that message and help new producers understand these concepts and help them with the infrastructure they need implement these new practices, we're going to have significant gains in this region. So I guess, you know, soil health to me is just, um, you know, soil health really leads to, to healthy plants, it leads to healthy animals, it leads to healthy ecosystems, it leads to healthy people. We're going to be healthier as humans, you know, our, our kids are going to be healthier, the land continues to get healthier. Um, really for me it's just a compounding positive effect of everything around you. If we're improving soil health, we can improve the soil structure around these basins and actually buffer the impacts of, of, of water uh, in, in these cropland areas. If croplands are able to infiltrate the water uh, and store it you know, for later use, it's gonna minimize the disturbance in those low-lying areas. So it's gonna benefit the producer uh, managing those, those wetland areas in a farming system. We know that the more grassland that there is on the landscape, the more successful that waterfowl nests will be. Due to predators and our fragmented landscape, 85 of 100 nests will not survive. That is why it's critical for DU to work to conserve the grasses that we have and then also put more grasses on the landscape. The importance of grasslands is truly invaluable in the sense that it provides more services than just grass on landscape for cattle, but also it houses a lot of wildlife species and the wetlands on the landscape provide a lot of goods and services for those wildlife species as well as humans. So in, in a conventional farming system, uh, these, these small wetlands can be problematic. Uh, they're hard to drive big, big equipment around, uh, hard to navigate and, and plant into. Uh, and the, often the solution we see is to, is to put in drain tile or to drain these wetlands and put that water elsewhere. Uh, that might fix uh, initially some of your subsurface moisture problems, but it's not a great long-term solution. Wetlands, especially when they're included with, with these soil health practices and regenerative agriculture, can provide a wide variety of benefits, uh, particularly from an ecosystem goods and services standpoint. Uh, we're able to capture and sequester carbon from the atmosphere. Uh, we improve the, the quality of, of the water on our landscape. Uh, we improve uh, the retention of that water. So really when, when we started the soil health program uh, in the prairies, uh, we, we found cover crops to be uh, uh, the best way to start the conversation with producers. So once you come out of a crop system, if we can get another um, cover crop, uh, whether a single species or multi-species cover crop going in there, then we can protect that soil. Um, also another uh, thing that we like to do is um, maintain uh, crop residue. We can actually armor plate that soil and keep it from eroding through wind or water erosion. Grass root composition is one of the most important aspects to soil health as well in these grassland ecosystems. When we start talking about monoculture and non-native species, a lot of the roots are only a couple inches into the soil, which does not provide that protection to wind erosion and rain erosion that we would get out of a native system. In these native grasses, we often see their roots going upwards of 10 feet down into the soil. Native grass species are meant to be here in the Prairie Pothole region. We can maintain a living root as much of the year as possible. We can drastically increase our soil health. And so by maintaining a living root as many months as possible, we kind of heal 
that system back together. Reducing disturbance on the landscape is going to reduce uh, uh, erosion and sedimentation in our wetlands. So all of these come together to impact farmers and ranchers and, and wildlife at the same time. More than, more than half of the topsoil has disappeared over the last 50 years. And that's not something you really uh, visualize as you're driving across the landscape. But once you dig down and take a look at the soil, uh, you realize what's been lost. We see a overuse of tillage. We see a overuse of synthetic fertilizers and a lot of um, chemicals that aren't needed. And so when you do all that, that's when your soil becomes dirt. You get erosion, you get runoff, and you get a dead system. Anytime you do any kind of tillage, whether it's chisel plowing or cultivating or whatever, you're losing up to 70% of your beneficial insects and biota. The bacteria and the microorganisms, they have a functioning level in that soil system where they belong. And once you disrupt that, then you, have, then you lose them. So as grassland is put to cropland, we see a massive influx of carbon that is leaving the soil and going into the atmosphere. A lot of the plants that we have in the landscape are meant to keep carbon in the soil. But whenever we have tillage events, whether it's in grassland or cropland, massive amounts of carbon are released back into the atmosphere, contributing to the climate change that we're experiencing. So we've recognized for years that, uh, that livestock are critically important uh, in the Great Plain. If we can integrate livestock into a cropping rotation, uh, we can include those benefits and improve soil health in those areas that have, have high wetland densities too. By incorporating livestock, it actually aids in the producer's bottom line. Obviously you have the ability to buy or to sell your livestock, but also the nutrients that you're getting from the livestock through urine and feces. By doing that, not only are you putting money in your bank account, but also you're putting money into your soil account. We start getting into anglers, we start getting into kayaking and swimming, and we start talking about bird watching, and we talk about flood mitigation, and this truly does affect the entire population. Really, these practices uh, really provide a lot of benefit uh, for the entire state of South Dakota, uh, the region, and really on a national scale at the same time. Habitat conservation in the prairies is multifaceted. It is not cheap. It is not quick. It takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of money to keep our habitats intact on the landscape. So in a fully functional soil health system, you're taking what Mother Nature gave you and you're letting Mother Nature work for you. You're using livestock, you're using cover crops, and so there's reduced inputs, or reduced synthetic fertilizer, reduced insecticides and pesticides. And so we can get into highly functional systems where we're letting Mother Nature do her work and yet we're yielding great things from it. Farmers and ranchers in South Dakota carry an incredibly heavy load when it comes to producing food and goods for the world. And if we expect them to keep this going, there's no reason that DU shouldn't be able to step in and assist them with education and financial assistance to help them get their operation to where it not only benefits them, but it also does good for the world. Uh, we need to be thinking about practices that build soil, uh, not that lose soil. And, and really soil health and regenerative agriculture is that winning ticket. We're gonna build soil, we're gonna add diversity to the landscape, we're gonna keep our wetlands and grasslands intact.